So last week while I was working in the practical session, I hear someone saying, ah, I passed, I passed. And I was like, yeah, I know work check in this. Prep doctors are so hard, but like not this much. She was like, no, no, I passed ACJ. I was like, oh, one second. What are you doing here? She was like, yeah, I was getting ready. So she's smart. So first of all, let's say congratulations for her and for everyone passing ACJ. It did it. So she was a smart. She know what she was waiting for and she get ready for it. She is interactive. She's getting the cat. She's getting the loop. She's getting the course and she's working. I don't think every one of you have this knowledge or have this experience. So I'm here to share with you this experience today. Today's session will be answering most of your questions. So get a cup of coffee and get ready to it. This is Mohamed Musa from AFK Study Plan and our website. I'm giving free resources for the AFK about the articles, topics you need to pass AFK exam. If you know some of your friend is struggling with AFK, please recommend this website for them. I think it's good. Okay. Today you are going to answer the major question. So after ACJ, what's the life I am waiting after ACJ? Because you hear a lot of news about the exam. It's difficult. It's this. So I need to take courses. So what course I need to take? So let's break it to questions. I will put a timestamp. It will be like somewhere in the screen where you can catch it. I think here where you can catch the timestamp for it. So today you are going to discuss what's the exam. What's the difference between this exam and the previous exam? I'm going to discuss like uh, the cost for the practice for the exam, the cost to get the loop, the cost to get the instrument, and the time frame you need to practice, and when you know you are ready to go to the exam. And during the video, I will give you some hints that I think is beneficial, where you can lever your time and lever your effort. Let's go three years back, BC, like not BC, like before COVID. Before COVID, NDB used to conduct pr practical exam, which they call SES. They conducted in the Canadian University in Canada. And then during COVID, they, has, they had this conflict with the university, like uh, the priority for the dentist in the university or the dentist who did register for NDB. And then they cancel exam, they book exam, they cancel exam. And then NDB was like, okay, that's enough. We're going to do our own facility in Ottawa. It will be a big hospital or big like educational institute where we can do the exam. So they promised they will conduct the exam more frequently before they have only three chances. Now they said you have unlimited trials for five years, which is amazing. But as NDV usually is doing, they add one more part to the exam. So they said we have seven skills that you need to pass clinically and you have 10 station of what they call situational judgment. So they said you have five years to pass the practical exam you have unlimited attempts to do it, not like before three attempts only, but they add other part of the exam to be the situational judgment part. So why they add this exam? How you can study for this exam? What courses you can take? What's the time frame from where you can get the materials? How you can be smart like our lady in the beginning where she can conduct and she can start practicing and know what she's doing? Today, I will explain all about that. So please get your pen and paper, write your notes, write your question, feel free to contact me again, and maybe we can do a follow-up session to answer the extra question. But today I will try to cover most questions that I have received about this topic. The good part of NDB announcement, like now because I know some dentists who pass everything and they failed the clinical exam and third trials, so they have huge debt now that they need to pay and they cannot uh, practice dentistry in Canada, which was like, not a bad news, like a nightmare for everyone. So this part of the news is amazing because everyone passing ACG, you are half dentist, like half license here in Canada. Like you are dentist anyway, but like you are half license here. It's a matter of time frame, a money frame. What's the time you are going to spend and what, how much money you are going to spend to pass the exam. So let's break down the exam. So you have one day which you're gonna do the practical part, which is seven projects and a situation judgment which is like theoretical part, which is nine station. Let's start with the situation judgment part. Okay, so for any one of you who did um, work as dental assistant or dental hygienist, apart from doing this at the correct maneuver to survive in Canada till you get your license, now this step will give you extra edge over everyone. Because situation judgment, basically think about the worst five patient you did see in the office and the worst three patients you need to send to other office and the weirdest two interaction between the dentist and the assistant and the hygienist. 
This is situation judgment. Let's explain more about situation judgment. You will be faced with 10 situations. Five written, five oral. Oral mean you are going to speak with an actor. He will act like a patient or other dentist with conflict, assistant with conflict, so you can discuss with him. In this 10 stations, you will be faced with five main concepts or discipline. These concepts starting from like patient education, communication, collaboration, uh, professionalism, like I cannot recall the names of it, but like it's five competency. Every competency will have two and one oral, or like one like oral and one written where you can write the stuff. This exam is easy, but, and listen carefully, you need to be interactive. It's not about the question, it's how you're gonna answer the question. So usually the question come easy, like patient come to you, he has tooth with like, he, he said it's badly broken, it collect food, but it's not painful for him. And he's showing you x-ray, he asking you to explain to him what the treatment option. And then you think, okay, there is no other treatment, extraction or no treatment. So what's the complication of extraction? What's the complication of no treatment? And then you are ready. And when you speak with the actor, he might drag you to two or three different things. He might tell you, I don't get freezing. Like this is against my culture. How are you gonna deal with him? So this exam is for you to know how to deal with real patient. And honestly, I cannot blame NDB for this one because and this might tip some of you off, but like, this is honesty. I did work with like almost 20 dentists, some of them like direct license, some of them um, did uh, advanced placement in Canada, some of them graduate from Canada or USA or even Australia. Honestly, there is difference. And the difference is not in clinical skills, it's like about following the protocol and dealing with patient in a different way. So this exam, I love it because it will get our knowledge to be with this one. I know this might seem like uh, you speak about NDB in a good way. No, is that about like being fair? Because if you go to the other side, honestly, you will see like bad stuff. Let me give you just one quick example. Like if uh, a patient come to you with one four, which is badly broken, most dentists will try to take it out because it's, it's badly broken. There is no grip. Other dentists from other university, he will not start even trying to get the tooth out. He will do a flap, remove bone, and get it out. And then when you discuss with him, you're like, this is a protocol that we should follow. So this is the level we should be on it. So you're gonna be competent with everyone. So let's not get deep in this part, but like this is the situational judgment part. It's easy, but it, you just need to be interactive. They will not like uh, mark you in your English proficiency. As long as your English is like understandable, you can see now my English is like, you can understand me, it's good. They don't care about accent, they don't, they said they don't care about grammar mistakes, but I would suspect that you should try your best to be in a good way about that. Because at the end of the day, they said the actor, if the actor did understand what you said, we are good. So it's not an like Alice exam. So this is situation judgment part. The practical part is really the hard part. Because now you have seven skills, you should pass all the seven skills. Yeah, before we finish situation judgment, you have 10 station, you can fail four out of 10, but you cannot fail two station from the same competency. Meaning like, if you're failing two station, one from professionalism and one from uh, patient education, good. If you're failing two stations, and these two stations coming from patient education and patient education, like education of the patient, you didn't fail four, you didn't fail four, but you're gonna fail the exam. So you should be careful not to fail two stations from the same competency. I wouldn't recommend thinking about competency because as I said, the question might you think this is vision education and then it go to like uh, culture acceptance and uh, acceptance and the other competency. So you should just be clear with your communication and be interactive with the actor in front of you. And I think this part of exam is not so hard, okay? The practical one, as we said, seven skills, these seven skills, you should pass it all. And this is the hard part. You cannot fail any of those. What are these seven skills? First one, MOD. Like, man, just seeing MOD is stressing me out. This skill is horrible because like, working with your high speed handpiece or friction grip handpiece in acrylic teeth is a nightmare. And then if you touch it, like you kill it. If you touch an adjacent tooth, you kill it. It's horrible, like MOD, trust me, is, is really hard. And this is why uh, most courses start with it. And I was like sad about that, but like, honestly, yes, this makes sense because this is the hardest part. If you can do it, the other skills will be easier for you. Second skill to do crown prep. Third skill to do professional crown for this crown prep. 
fourth skill to do class 4 restoration composite and then the um, fifth skills to do the amalgam restoration for MOD cavity sometimes come with cusp cap sixth one to do composite restoration MOD sometimes come with cusp cap last one to do access for RCT and seven one is not like a skill it's infection control during you doing the skills the eight hours practice exam you should follow the and function control skills which you cannot get an instrument from the floor with your mask uh, with your gloves you cannot touch your mask with your gloves i don't know people fail for infection control but like because like you should take care about that once you start practicing so it will be like a routine for you and then move on so let's go back to the skills as we said mod is the hardest one it will take long time for you to master the criteria honestly criteria are crazy it's very hard and it kill, it kills me when other dentists who did pass ACS. Oh man, the now exam is easier. I was like, man, show me, show me, get me an MOD now. Get me, give me one. Okay, anyway, exam is not easy. You should practice more for it. Crown prep, you do provisional crown for it. It's like easier for me, at least. I love crown prep. It's easier for me. Amalgam for me is a nightmare because I didn't do amalgam ever. So it took me maybe like six weeks. Just I, I did maybe 50 amalgam just to know, okay, I know what they are looking for now. And then the other projects are not very difficult. Okay, so what you need to know about those projects and how you can pass those. So the criteria is written on the website. You should go to this criteria, print it. I, I, I will recommend you what I did and what I hear from other dentists. You print the criteria, you put it in front of you. Before you start, you go to read the criteria. Okay, so I'm MOD, buccolingual, you should fit the condenser, small condenser, to be like loosely inside it, not stuck inside it, but it should be wide, not too wide, to fit the um, hatchet. So hatchet is three millimeters. So if it's more than three millimeters, so it's that this is fail. So what I would recommend for you, you go read the criteria, and then it will give you numbers. What make like your life easier to translate these numbers to the instrument you have in your hand, not to go to check with the instrument. So for example, it should fit the smallest condenser, but not the more than three millimeter, and that was buckling one. So you should fit your condenser, but shouldn't fit your hatchet. So this is the criteria you are going to work upon it. The cavity should be centered in the central part of the tooth. So you're gonna start drill, drilling from the central groove and move on, move on. The depth should be not more than three millimeter. So the barrier you're going to use two, five, six, the depth is three millimeter. So you should make sure before you move, your bear is not fully seated inside the cavity. So this way, you're going to save yourself time. You're going to know the criteria which you need to follow. And this will save you a huge amount of effort because like if you stop every time and get your probe to check and go check and go this is so hard and this will like kill you it will be so give you so strain and stress in your shoulder in your neck so try to get a shortcut for this numbers so you can follow and then move on move on i don't want to like explain more about the practical one but this is how you should think about it and one more criterion because i feel i didn't do it so i did see one dance do it doing it and it was like life-saving you do not start the project unless you're clean area. You have a clean area. You're going to do amalgam now, so you have instrument for amalgam only. You, are, you know where is the, um, the condenser. You know everything before you mix the amalgam. Why? Because this will save you time. If you have a messy uh, work um, area, and then you mix amalgam, and then you come back, you, you look for this condenser, you look for this one, you're wasting time. You're wasting time and you're stressing yourself. You think about amalgam and other project because the other project you feel like I'm wasting time. So do not waste time. Try to make it easy. Try to make it condense it. Try to make it organized. It will save you time. Trust me. This criteria will save you a lot of time. So let's go to the rough questions. When I know I can go for exam or what's the time frame for me to say, okay, I can go to exam. And there's the hardest question ever. So let me break it down. So it's different from one person to other person like for myself I'm a married man I have family I have kids I am working now like I was working full-time now working part-time so you need to practice at least eight hours for a long time so you can reach to know the criteria and what's needed from you and then you need to know how to pile the project back to back so you need first to pass a project 
second, to pass the next project, third, to combine the project to make it in a time frame and fashion where you pass it, then you feel, okay, I'm ready to go to exam. So let me give you a solid statement. If you can do seven projects in seven hours and you are passing five out of seven, so you are ready, you can book the exam now. Let me repeat it. If you sit down in your chair, working for seven hours straight, and you did seven projects and you passed out, out of seven, at this point, you are good to book the exam. Why? Exam is eight hours. In the practice, you are relaxed, you are easy, you, you are little stressed, but like you have unlimited time, so you are not stressed, stressed so much. In the real exam, it will be a little different, so you need to cut the time less. So in the exam, if you are faced with any complication, you need to redo the measles step of the amalgam, you need to redo your class four, you have time to do it. And then passing five out seven, meaning you are close. The last two projects, you will like, if you're passing five and the two you missed, so it doesn't mean like you have a major mistake or fatal mistake, you can tweak it. So what's the time frame? I do not know. You know how many hours you can practice, how the intensity of your practice, are you going to the course station just to socialize with everyone and speaking with everyone or are you sitting? Because like, let me give you an example about myself. When I go, I have my cup of coffee, I have my, my, I don't speak with anyone. I sit at least four hours straight, I don't speak with anyone. I'm just here four hours, at least two, three to four projects, and then we can go out to eat and then just socialize. I see other dentists don't, they don't do that. So if you practice for two years, it's nothing because you don't have focus. If you are not focused, you cannot go anywhere. Okay? I know this sounds a little harsh, but like I'm trying to think about it this way. This is how I think about it. When I go to practice, I am losing money. I am paying money for the course and I'm losing money that I can make while working. And money is of limited supplies for us because if money is unlimited for us so you wouldn't be listening to me because you have money and then you can do it so this is how you should think about it and there's the criteria you can go about it so let me give you some solid numbers so i was speaking with one of my friends he told me before tooth number 20 do not speak with me so you want to do three five because like three five is a star in this exam three five can come as mod three five can come as a crown prep and provision restriction so three five is a star here so if you didn't do 3, 5, 20 times, you cannot say, say, I am good. If you didn't do 20, at least 20 tooth MOD, 20 project MOD, without even passing off it, like you just didn't do 20, so you didn't go anywhere, you didn't go anywhere. So because I see people like, oh, I did two, I can go to the exam. No, you should do more. So after that, you should pile it, and then we speak about the criteria. Then, what I used to do, and this is beneficial, you should see other dentists working. So go to someone, I, and I, I know this is a little sensitive because like as dentists, and I didn't realize this before I came to Canada, we don't love anyone even stepping in our foot. So you should go to one of your friends or someone you think he's working well and he has a good style of working and tell him, okay, I, I will just watch you. I will be your assistant. And you sit down and watch, you say nothing. You just watch silently. When you watch, you see how he's doing, you see how he's using the hatchet, how he's arranging his tray, so you get to know more. You see a mistake that you didn't, you do before, and he's not doing it. Or even he do some mistakes, and then after he's done, do not bother him, please. You tell him, okay, so how you think about this, how you think about that. This will push you more and more. So, we speak about numbers, you should do more, at least 20, and then you speak. Second, you should sit with someone is working. Third, and this is amazing, you should work unless some what someone watch you working. Because sometimes you do mistakes, you do not know what is a mistake. And I will not tell you what I did in one, two, three, four. So when you're seeing me working, you say, okay, after I'm done, telling me, okay, so you did this mistake, you did this mistake, please pay attention for this one. Do not remove matrix man now. Care about the floss, how we do floss. Like, this is the criteria you should know. So I'm now I'm giving you solid criteria where you can follow so it can boost your confidence can improve your skills. And last tip, I would recommend you doing it after you finish your week. You do not start your week unless you have, okay, I'm today, I, this week I will do 20 projects. I will do 15 projects. I will do 10 projects. And you pile it in um, Ziploc. Next week, you go to next week. Third week, you go to third week. In the fourth week, you could compare first week to the fourth week, and then you watch this tooth. You watch this tooth. I'm still having the same problem. No, I should stop now. I should seek help. 
No, I'm improving. But calf depth is good. Calf depth is not good. It's, uh, this is too deep. Amalgam is fragile. Amalgam is broken. Have overhang restriction. Class four is overhanging. I have loose contact. I did fix this one. So you should do a diary for yourself. What's the mistakes you are doing? How you can overcome those? By this solid criteria, by this tangible criteria, by this report you're doing yourself, and you should be sober honest with, with yourself, then you can say, okay, I can practice three months and then go to exam. No, I need more time to go to exam. So no one in the whole world can tell you, you should be confident about yourself. You should like, at the say in Canada, you should invest yourself in this. It's hard, it's not easy, but other dentists did it. So me and you can do it, yeah? So just trust yourself, follow the steps and hopefully everyone will go to the other side okay so let's now answer some question that i received what is the loop i should use so first of all should i use loop yes you should use loop because they are going to like mark your work by loop so how come you can follow criteria that you cannot see if you cannot see the mesial marginal ridge of your crown or you cannot see the distal step of 27 how are you gonna make sure it's like uniform in thickness and there is no ditch if you cannot see it you cannot make it correct so you should use a loop so what's the magnification i would recommend i would recommend 3.5 do not go more than 3.5 because as the loop is has more magnification first of all it will be more expensive and we agreed we don't have money second it will have less field field of field field of view Field of view, like any of you that use a loop, like in, without loop, you see everything. With a loop, the field of view is limited. So whatever is good, when you see the upper arch, when you see a little part of the lower arch, is amazing. This is 3, 3.5. When you go to 4.55, so you only see one tooth, or one tooth before, one tooth after. And this is really annoying, trust me, this is super annoying. It will like make your eye fatigue easily. It will make it harder for you to work for a long time. This one is used for RST, re-RST, retreatment. When you go practice and you have your lessons, you can pay 6K, 7K for this loop, go for it. Now, no, let's go for the less loop. 3.5 is amazing. And then now you have the ergo vision, which is insane. Like I cannot say about it, it is insane. Because I see some dentists, like, ah, I am, I'm not sure about it. Because I ordered this one and they, took a long time to send it to me, so he sent me the other one, was not without ergo, like the straight one. So why are you working doing this way? Think about your your neck, your, your shoulder, for four hours straight doing this way. After you are done, you cannot even go this way. For the ergo one, you should go this way, because it's broken, like it's angulated. So if you go this way, you will see your chest. You don't need to see your chest, you need to see the arch, the dentist, the, the teeth. So you should look this way. This, like, symbol, like you think this is like few angles of difference. Yes, few angles, but like four, five, six hours, it will make your life totally different. I would recommend Oroscoptic because Oroscoptic has this like ergo uh, design and they have Dragonfly where the battery are here. So there is no wires, there's nothing. And they give you four batteries. Each set will last for maybe four hours. You are charging the other one. You have this one working, so you are covered you have everything. So you should go for a loop. This is no question about it. There is no brainer here. Second, 3.5, I would recommend. Third, I would recommend the Ergo one. I would recommend the Butterfly because like it has a battery here and they give you payment plan for one year with no interest. So I would recommend this one. And to confirm, I have no relation with this company. I'm just giving you my recommendation. It might fit you, it might not fit you. And the whole video here just to help you out and because I feel like when I'm helping someone else, this makes me feel better at least, okay? So let's go to the tricky part of this video, courses. What courses can I take? So for, you don't have a lot of options, okay? You do not have a lot of options. You have limited options because some people living in uh, cities where they don't have access for some people moving to the other cities. So you should take course or not. I think after explaining all that, I think you can conclude. What courses are available? So you have four or five options like Prep Doctors, Jade, the STC, I do not recall the name, and the other one, honestly, I cannot recall the name. Prep Doctors are good, but they are so pricey. The, the price for Prep Doctors may be like double or triple for the other uh, courses, but because they have um, they have a structure, they have, they have the vibes to give to you, they can follow up with you, they have criteria where you can follow. So I think this, this is the reason why they are charging more because they have huge overhead, but I'm not defending that because I am paying for this 
process right. and I know this is extremely expensive. So the cycle they care about, the cycle they said like cycle of three months. So you need maybe two cycles, I need mock exams. So the cycle range between like 5,500 from prep doctors, other schools maybe 3,500, 4,000. You can just do work checks with other uh, dentists, like uh, maybe not in the courses, but you should have your investment in your house to have a home unit like the one behind me here, where you can work so you can know what you're doing. But you can just start with one cycle and then you can just um, take a break for three months where you can practice, but again, this require you to have self-discipline that you can follow because this is a hand skill like if you're working for three months and then you cut it to one month you are not going going to lose it because you are a dentist you, you know this criteria you know how to do it but it will be harder for you to catch up again so this is how you should think about it so i'm not advocating for any course I, i'm not advocating for anyone i'm not affiliated by anything but i think you need at least six months and then again it's about criteria if you have time and you have effort to invest everything because trust me it's not easy like working for six hours standing like sitting and doing this loop it's not easy after four hours you feel like oh, i wanna run home what i'm doing for myself this is really hard so you should know about it for the speech and judgment they have different courses prep doctors they have 3500 for the course which is like insanely expensive and they call it what they call mini mocks for the other one like 3500 again other courses maybe like 1800 for jade other courses maybe 2500 someone send me other link for someone with like 3500 including the mocks so it's different from one school to another so the bottom line for courses unique courses for sure but you should know what are you doing you should invest your time to the maximum benefit for yourself while doing the course not going to socialize or just to speak with everyone and then you should follow the criteria I told you in the beginning so you know, okay, I'm ready to go to exam. No, I need to practice more. So at the end of the day, it's yourself and you should be honest with, with yourself. Yeah, they have unlimited trials now, but the exam is 8K, 8K, 8,000. So you should be careful about this one, okay? Can I practice at home? This is the best practice I couldn't think about. It. So you can start a course with three months and then you can have equipment inside your basement to work about it. But I think this would be really tough if you're living in an apartment because the compressor is so like loud. You should get your instrument, you should get your stuff. But what instrument you should buy? The instrument you will need. You will need a kit. A kit meaning like you need the probe, a mirror, hatchet, general major trimmer, condenser, like blah, 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 blah. So from where I can get it? If you go to uh, someone to buy it from like Nilling or stuff like this, it will be expensive. So I would recommend you to go to Facebook market, to go to the communities, some communities they are selling instrument, try to get instrument. And it will be like half price for the new one. And for sure it will not be perfect. Like not everything will be perfect. You will need to add well, one, one more tweezer. You will need to add one more hatchet. The hatchet is like, I think 90 or hundred dollars. So you will add some more money, but at least you are saving money. So the first thing. Second, for other instruments you should go. If you can, get it from back home, amalgam, composite, um, temporary crown, restoration material, like anything you can get from your home, please do it. If you can get someone to get it from other country, please try to do it because this will save you tons of money. This will save you tons of money, but not for the dental loop because dental loop, you need to do maintenance. If it's broken, you should send it to the company. And as we agreed before, every company now is giving you discounted price, giving you payment plan for one year with no interest. So this is a little tricky to like play with it because like when the loop is broken you can do nothing about it so try to get some instrument from your home uh try to get hand pieces from your home try to get some composite amalgam from your home this is would be nice if you're working in a dental office they have some expiring material you can take and use they will be so happy to help you trust me they will every dentist when you know like the assistant is working upon this process not only myself like i i've received this from everyone working they help you they tend to help you trust me they tend to help you so ask for help, they will help you. Again, handpiece, handpiece. So they give you an exam, handpiece which is cover, which is amazing, but insanely expensive. I think it's only, by the cup there will be maybe 1700. So I would recommend to start with regular handpiece, any handpiece from your back home. And then once you know what are you doing, so you can go closer to the exam, you know, I know the criteria now, okay, so let's get this expensive one. Again, you can get it from Facebook market, from someone who did pass the exam, he can sell it to you. 
but don't be so optimistic. It will it'll cost you maybe 1k, 1k, 100. So it's not it's not cheap. That's why I'm telling you to do it later. Why I'm telling you to do it later? Because if you have everything and you do not have the type don't, you do not have the teeth, it's nothing. You can do nothing about it. So you should get the type don't again. Facebook market, it will be damaged, no problem, because you're gonna damage it anyway when you feel you are close, so you can get the new one. And then the teeth, and the problem with the teeth, and let me tell you about it. We have a huge problem with the teeth, and you cannot know about this problem. And NDB is trying, I don't know if they are trying to solve it or they are trying to escalate it. So they said it's starting from October, they are using a different type of taunt with different teeth. So unless you know you are going before October, you should practice in this current teeth if you are going after October so you should aim for the other teeth what's the difference honestly no one knows they said the name of type don't from same company Kilgore but they said it's a different um, model about it like they have models for it they said they had has different consistency and the uh, feedback I received the other gum or the soft tissue like my replica of soft tissue with a gum will be tougher it will be not um, easy to be injured because like the current one they are using so delicate like if you go with your hatchet this week you kill it and if you kill it you fail your exam so yeah this is hard so this is a good part about it and i think they did it because like kilgore kilgore itself cannot give this um, supplies for it so again if you know someone from back home he can know the dealership for kilgore please go we tried i didn't have good luck about it but if you can do it please do it you will need a uh, uh, regular teeth where you can do the MOD cavity and you do crown prep. You will need a pre cut, pre cut where the cut tooth is cut it so you can do the amalgam. I would recommend cut your teeth MOD and then put amalgam over it again. As you go more, as you are confident about your skill, you go to the pre cut. Lastly, which is the hardest one, is the RCT one or endo teeth, which is extremely expensive. Every tooth is like $12, which is insane. The pre cut $3.5, I think and the regular teeth 2.5 so you should have this money instead of buying the because i see some dentists doing this they get the cavo hand beans and he, he he do not have teeth to practice so no invest this money to get the teeth so you can work and then when you go more and more so you can get the cavo hand beans and then you are ready for your exam so to recap this part you can get some instrument or all instrument as I recommend from a Facebook market you will see you will see it in the cycles so now some people are waiting for the result for practical exam so now you will see less kit available for to be sold but like in the next few weeks when the exam results are out so we'll see a lot of kit to be sold and then you need uh, teeth you need a pre-cut you need RST I would recommend RST to pay later because it's insanely expensive again you have limited resources you would try to manipulate it so you can go more and more you are not waiting for the optimal environment to start you should start and then as you go you improve you get more announcement and then you move you move till you see okay i'm good now i can book my exam so the other vendors where you can get you have nilling you have north america you have candent where you can please do account with them to get the teeth after you're getting some stuff from the facebook market it will save you tons of trust me it will save you tons of money Okay, I hope everything about this part is clear. So let's recap everything. This process is hard. It will cost you a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of time. So you should be smart about it. You will need courses. You will need uh, sometimes to work at your home. You will need sometimes someone to check, to do work, check for your uh, work. So it give you feedback. You need to practice, practice, practice. And then after you can do seven projects and seven hours past five of it, okay. Now you can go to book the exam. Booking exam is not easy. Um, it's, it's it's insane. Like I cannot explain about it. It's really insane. And I will not explain because you did book AFK SJ. So you know what I'm speaking about. It's the same for Endic. There is no difference. You think okay, it's twice a week, and then the twice a week, yeah, amazing. But like you have two months or three months a year where they conduct no exam. So anyway, it is what it is as it is. You should be careful about your money. You should caref be careful about your socialization when you go to courses. I would recommend to get the Ergo uh, Vision um, or Ergo Design Loop. I would recommend you to work three months and then go to your home to practice more. I would recommend you to track your progress, do your notes, be ready. Make sure you are improving every day. And then when you are ready, so you can book your exam. 
Suspicion and judgment is not a big deal, you just need to be interactive with the patient. With the actor, you should know about the writing, how we're gonna do it, you, should don't, you shouldn't do uh, spelling mistakes. They said they are not gonna judge you about spelling mistakes, but think about it. If you have a written, in a written, a written um, in a good way with little spelling mistake, but again, this is not the thing to care about more. You should care about being interactive with um, actors with you. I hope I did answer everything. Good luck.